Hey guys, welcome to Brian's Man Cave. So today I'm going to be playing Buck Rogers for the Atari 2600. Um, now this is a game that's kind of been on a backlog for me. I've had it for a, lo a long time in my collection, and I've yet to actually do any kind of video on it. Uh, but uh, one of my you know frequent watchers of my show, and also a Patreon patron on my Patreon asked me if I could do this game, because he's a big fan of Buck Rogers. And so I said, yeah, sure, why not? I mean, I've, I've been wanting to do this one for quite a while now. So, this I don't know if this game really has much in common with the actual Buck Rogers storyline. Um, I didn't actually really, you know, get into Buck Rogers when I was younger, but I did have a Buck Rogers lunchbox. So, I remember always having that little lunchbox, and it had the thermos inside. I mean, everybody always had those little plastic lunchbox with the little thermos that was attached. And for whatever reason, I had Buck Rogers. But anyways, so this is a game from Sega. Um, and they've done a f you know, few interesting titles on the Atari 2600. Um, Congo Bongo I've, I've already played. Spy Hunter. And there's a few other more you know, expensive rare ones too. Um, but uh, anyways, yeah, so the, the storyline on this is pretty much, uh, you know, it's supposed to be in the 25th century, and you're Buck Rogers fighting the Battle of Planet Zoom, and this is a race against death. Um, death? And your ultimate, most powerful enemy is a deadly mothership. So that's pretty much what you're trying to do in this game, is you're flying and you're trying to get to the mothership. Now there's a few games that this has some similarities to, so I'm going to try and uh, talk about those as I'm playing. So let's get to the game. So we got the nice startup screen here, and I don't know why it's got this weird noise. Like this just drives me nuts. <laughs> just the same tone, being almost like you're holding down a button. Um, but yeah, I mean, otherwise it's you know it got a nice little screen there. So let's get started. Level one. So right off the bat, you can see it's it's a spaceship shooter style game. And the object is to get through these, like, electro... Electroids or something, whatever these things are. They're like electric posts. <laughs> and so it's kind of like... Almost like skiing, in a sense. Only instead of coming from the top down, you're... You're going from the bottom up. Uh, <laughs> but it's supposed to be that you're, you're flying through a pathway. And, oh, I just got taken out by hitting one. And if you look at the top of the screen... Uh, there's a number there. Right now it says four, and uh, it's counting down every every time I go through a beam, because you're supposed to clear those many beams to get into the space area. So another game that this kind of reminds me of is Zaxxon, especially this part of the game. When you, um, when you play Zaxxon and you go through that little area, you're shooting all the stuff, and then you get off through the wall, then you go into space, and you gotta shoot the... Uh, planes that are coming after you. And then then you go back to the land spot, and so on and so forth, uh, until you hit, well, in this case you're looking for the mothership, but in Zaxxon you're actually trying to get Zaxxon. Um, so there is a lot of similarities there as well. Uh, but in this, you, you do have like that speed element, um, and, but there's no um, up and down uh, like in Zaxxon where you can because you know Zaxxon being oh, there's a mothership oh and Zaxxon being in the isometric view uh, you can actually have depth in this game they don't give you any depth you're literally just kind of also like river raid where you're kind of only in one space <laughs> you don't get to go up and down And of course, the faster you go, the more points you get, but the more difficult it actually is because you are really, you know, trying to dodge everything. And that's just, just me getting killed. <laughs> Let's try that again. I believe I, I read that there's like 16 levels to this. And so this is only the first level. Jason said he was, um, he really wants to pick this game up, like he was looking at, you know, I, the cartridge itself is only like, you know, around ten bucks. 
So it's not expensive, but he's like, you know, even if it sucks, even if the game sucks, it's still worth picking up the cartridge because he's a big Buck Rogers fan. And uh, yeah, sure. Um, it's not. A it's actually not that bad of a game. You know, it does give you some challenge, and there is, you know, a lot going on. I just don't know how true to the storyline this is for Buck Rogers. Like I said, um, having never actually uh, you know, learned any of the story but line behind Buck Rogers. However, oh, I got him. However, I do remember Duck Dodgers, if you've watched Looney Tunes or Bugs Bunny and Tweety Show, <laughs> where Daffy Duck is Duck Dodgers in the 24th and a half century. <laughs> so that that I do know. In fact, that would make a great uh, Atari game. We didn't have enough Looney Tune Atari games. Uh, the ones I remember are Taz, which I still love today, and um, Roadrunner, which I never got my hands on a copy of. I think that was it. There was a there was a prototype Bugs Bunny. I don't think it ever went for sale. Oh man, this game is pretty fast and intense. I have to give it that. There is a lot going on. <laughs> The good thing is you can shoot two bullets at a time, unlike some some of the earlier Atari shooters that would only allow you to shoot, uh, say, one bullet. And you couldn't shoot again until that bullet either hit a target or left the screen, you know, which which could be annoying. Or sometimes what would happen is the, uh, if, if you shot a bullet and then uh, shot a second one, it would cancel out the first bullet, which would even be more annoying. So that mothership, you have to destroy two parts of it while it's in the same screen. If it leaves the screen and you didn't blow up both parts, it'll regenerate and come back. So that's what's happening there. <laughs> so you just hit one side of it, it's going to leave the screen, and it's going to come back with both sides of it again. And I like the color changing aspect of this game too. I like, it's almost like when you play, um, like Astro Smash or the Atari version of Astro Blast, where the screen changes color uh, to kind of show your progress. Other than that, it's, it's really just the difficulty changes. Um, things get a lot faster, and the uh, trying to get through those electro beams is much harder. I mean, you can go slow. Oh! No, <laughs> I still can't. <laughs> Still got to say that that is an awful sound that they put there. I like the level up thing, or the level one thing, how they move it up the screen like that. That's kind of a neat, neat little thing they did. The background is kind of a reminiscence of a Activision style. Almost like robot tank, in a sense. Speed up. But yeah, there's a lot of games that this just reminds me of, like pole position even in some degree. Uh, you know, where you're speeding up, slowing down, and you're turning uh, with the road essentially. Or um, Beam Rider. I think that's, that was pretty typical back then where a lot of games did kind of resemble other games. And I'm sure a lot of them... Um, inspired other games to, to exist. Ooh, got it. Well, the one thing I didn't mention was the uh, the timer you're on. Um, if you look at the, the top there, that green bar that's getting small, it has a little gray bar inside of it. It's like a little meter. When it when it hits the uh, left hand of the side of the screen, uh, you run out of time. So, another reason why good to go fast. <laughs> no! Dang it. Gotta go fast. No, this is not Sonic. But it is made by Sega. I'm just gonna blow up everything that gets in my way. Oh! 
You know what they should have said uh, a warning in this uh, may cause seizures. <laughs> Come on, you buggers. I'll get y'all. Ah! Destroyed! One man left. Or should I say one buck left? Got one buck! Make it count! Oh no! Ugh. Oh jeez! Really cool effect that they gave it too, that it's, it's uh going in and out of the screen and getting bigger and smaller to kind of imitate depth in a sense. Oh. But yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much the game. I mean, uh, it, it just gets harder and harder from there on in and uh, just so much crap being thrown at you. Anyways, let me know what you think of Buck Rogers, um, Planet of Zoom, I, I wonder if they were planning on doing like a, a series of these. That's why they just called it that instead of just calling it Buck Rogers. Maybe they were hoping they would be able to make like a sequel or part three or something. Uh, but yeah, this is it's pretty fun. I, I thought it was a, it's a nice game, and it's a little bit uh, harder to come by. I mean, you can probably find it on eBay and stuff like that, but you don't see them typically in in your you know your secondhand stores and all that. Uh, and you know unless they they have a lot of rare collectible stuff. Anyways, I hope Jason likes the video. Uh, he's probably going to pick this game up himself. I don't know if he plays Atari on, or, or if he just wants to buy it just for something fun to have. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Anyways, hope you liked the video. Hope you subscribe. Leave some comments down below. Talk to you later.